Hi. OK, so it's time to take what will hopefully be the, the last design level look at the address register. So I've made a few changes to the uh, schematic here. Now, firstly here I've dropped the borrow and carry outputs, predominantly because I don't really think we're going to be using them. And the more I um, worked with trying to design PCBs, the more I came to the conclusion that having lines we don't actually use is a, a liability. And the other thing I've done is I've taken out the 34-pin IDC type header and replaced it with separate 16-pin headers and a 2-pin header for the power. I've also added a ground to the uh, control lines, just because um, reading up a few things on PCB design, it, uh, it sounds like having my only ground line uh, a long way away from some of these other pins is unwise. I don't think it matters too much at the kind of frequencies we're going to be running this at, but um, it can't hurt. I've added a few uh, name improvements to some of the items around here, and I've named my LEDs down here because that allows me to identify them properly so I can get the labels on the PCB right. So let's convert this to PCB and uh, see what we can do. So I've been practicing on this software and I'm far from uh, an expert, but I think I've sussed out enough to, yeah. to, to get this done now. Firstly, what I'm going to do is pull out all the capacitors, because we'll place those separately. Now, the way it does the uh, net connections does make a mockery of spending lots of time putting the capacitors next to the chips in the schematic. I actually just need a, a row of as many capacitors as we actually uh, are going to be using. Okay, there's my indicator LEDs for the control lines and my register state LEDs. Okay, now the reason why I was quite keen on changing the connectors over was originally I thought that the IDC connector was going to be better because putting all the pins in a row would be a constraint on the size of the board. And when I started to build this, I learned that wasn't going to be the case. But then when I was actually experimenting with this, I realized just how terrible it is to get yourself into a situation where you have 16 lines and they all need to change direction. So you have a set of 16 lines connecting to a device with 16 lines in the opposite direction. So if you look at what's going on there, this is a total nightmare to root. Separating these out so I could just turn them over made life a whole lot easier. So that the actual order of the LEDs I want along the top kind of ends up dictating the right way around to put just about everything else on the board. Now I'm going to make quite heavy use of the auto routing feature, which is something that I know the professionals don't do, but this is my first PCB and I'm not a professional. But I, what I am doing is I'm treating the auto router a little bit like in software I treat a compiler. So writing lots of stuff manually in machine code or assembly language is not a smart thing to do. It's something you reserve very specifically for um, places where you've got a, a really compelling reason to do it. But what I do do quite a lot is look at the, the code being generated by the compiler. And if, it's, if I don't like what it's generating, I can spend a bit of time tweaking the code. So this, uh, this method is, uh, is working quite well. If anyone knows 
a way of taking a row of objects like this and rotating them individually all in one go. This would be relevant to my interests. OK, I'm going to have a go at auto-routing that and see how it does. OK, so I've stopped it there. Generally speaking, with a lot of these big line groups, it's not doing too bad. This bit down here was always going to be difficult because you have a lot of the um, outputs need to come all the way up here, but then that's a good place for them to be because they need to come into the inputs on all of these latch registers. I don't need quite as much room as I've given it up here. I think these could do with slightly more room to root. Now I've got two main considerations on where I'm placing these components. One is trying to give the wires enough room to get where they're going. And the second one is give me enough room to solder the components. Now this whole area down here is the bit that the auto router is struggling with most. Because these wires literally go everywhere. OK, let's give that another go. OK, some combination of operations I did there completely messed it up. So I'm going to try doing that again from scratch. OK, so it seems to be having quite a bit of problem up here now, so 
I'm just going to move everything down and give it a little bit more room. Okay, let's try that. Okay, now I've run the auto router a few times with some minor tweaks and it's uh, it's got to 99% and stopped, which is kind of worrying me a bit. So it's not making any progress. It doesn't seem to be making any changes. So I'm going to stop it and uh, see if I can work out what the problem is. Okay, so that's a line it hasn't successfully routed. Okay, it's worth turning the... Uh, snap off when you're doing the track laying. Okay, I've never actually done a via before. Okay, so I think everything is connected up the way it should be right now. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of things about this that are pretty terrible. But I think it's functional. Pretty horrible. But this is massively overdue and I think this will work. Now, I do want to bring in the overall size of the, the PCB a little. I'm trying to keep the dimensions of the PCB aligned with this grid, which is one tenth, which is obviously the same alignment as pins on a dip device. It seems like a fairly natural subdivision to use. I am kind of tempted to see if I can uh, squeeze that up ever so slightly and make it still work. Okay. So, let's switch to the bottom layer, and let's create a region. Okay, that's automatically assigned to ground. That's made so much of that a lot neater. Okay, go back to the top layer, put a fill in there as well. Okay, so what I've just done is I've put a fill of all the accessible empty space on the back as ground and as VCC on the front. So you can see the way the capacitors here are, are connecting up directly to this partial plane. That looks pretty good. So these signal lines up here are all active low. So they're uh, terminating at VCC. Okay, that looks pretty good lining them up like that. Is our power in the middle with our big balancing capacitor for that. I'm a little bit worried about how long the connection is between there and its its capacitor. Okay, however, I think we're pretty good. Now, annoyingly, this fill layer seems to uh, cover the silk, but that's obviously not the way it actually will come out. Now it would be really nice to have like a logo or something 
but I haven't got around to trying to create that. I gave up trying to come up with a cool channel name. Everything I thought of was uh, already taken. I did think about putting the open source hardware logo down here, but I've been reading some of the requirements on that and I think I need to uh, understand it a little bit better before sticking it on anything. And I do want to get a move on with this. Once I've got all of these registers made up, it's actually going to uh, it's going to simplify the build slightly. The 16-bit registers and then the main 8-bit registers. Once those are done, then I'll no longer be messing around with big buses. I can sit them, stick them on a temporary backplane and, uh, and then focus on pipeline and the ALU. Okay, it's... Um, there are options up here for getting a look at it. Hey, there we go. Okay, I'm going to move this text down a little bit. I see. If we've got the top layer selected, the silk screen's a bit more visible. Okay, I don't think I need any labelling on these LEDs. It's pretty obvious what they are. Okay, well, I'm aware that's not the greatest PCB design ever, but it's definitely the best one I've ever done. Okay, so I need to actually get that manufactured. Now, using this easy EDA it means um, we do have an easy way of ordering. Okay, so green is the special offer. I quite like blue though. Let's see how this works. I mean, this this price actually just worries me. It's just too cheap. So I'm guessing if that's an introductory this is the price I'm going to be paying for everything else. So if I want blue, I should just order blue. I'm guessing costs more. It's completely irrelevant to us. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, well, I think we're pretty much done for now. I'm going to finish off checking out for this, see if I can get this PCB on its way. Assuming this is going to start asking for address and credit card information, which I don't want to type in on a video. So um, thanks for watching. Goodbye.